I always have two main goals in any session that I do. Number one, by the time you leave, you go, do you know what? That was really helpful. It will help me and benefit me in my work, but also in my personal life. My second goal is that whilst we're here, maybe we can actually have a bit of a laugh and enjoy ourselves. In 2002, I started to use this phrase, sumo, which as you probably know, stands for shut up, move on. You know when we're getting a little bit bogged down in negativity, I think there is a time to sometimes say to ourselves, you know what, I think it is time to sumo now. <laughs> Psychologists reckon on a day-to-day -day basis, 80 to 85% of what we do, we are doing on autopilot. And shut up is really just saying this. Guys, I want to give you an opportunity in our busy lives just to get off autopilot and to do some stopping, thinking and reflecting. I scrape it in the sixth form to do my A-levels. Two words never mentioned about my future. Further education. Why not? Because, Paul, you've done well to get some O-levels. You're doing your A-levels, but you've reached your ceiling. You've reached your limits. Isn't it interesting? What we think about ourselves can be influenced by other people at the time of our lives. We never think to question or challenge it. But I accepted it. I'm walking down the school corridor. I saw the head of sixth form walking towards me. I had a thought. Sir, can I just have a very, very brief word with you, please? Yeah? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, obviously I'm not good enough to go to university. Yep. <laughs> well, do you think I should apply for Polytechnic? I mean, you've got a job lined up in the bank. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Start in July, just thought, you know, maybe plan B. <laughs> McGee, if I was you, I'd stick with the bank. That is a conversation from over 30 years ago. I remember it like it was yesterday. First type of faulty thinking, the inner critic. Second one, the broken record. Third one, this is big. I call it the martyr syndrome. The martyr syndrome is when people get into this way of thinking, why does this always happen to me? I was in Warrington over the summer. I saw a guy with a t-shirt on. It just said this, same shit, different day. <laughs> I thought you must be great to work with. Here's a key phrase for you. Stress makes you stupid. Drugs and alcohol will also do it. <laughs> Stress makes you stupid. I'm not suggesting that if you go back to work this afternoon or first thing tomorrow, and if a colleague goes, we've had a right crisis with that flipping sumo session, I'm not suggesting from now on you go, um... <laughs> we just need to help ourselves step back, press pause, and get the bigger picture. Build a bridge... Get over it. Go as far as you can, and when you get there, you'll see further. And some people are looking for, well, show me the road I should go. You know what? The only thing I can tell you is the road you should go maybe for the next mile. Beyond that, we'll have to see. And sometimes you can't just kind of like move on. You've got to take a detour. You've got to have a bit of hippo time to sometimes feel mad, bad, or sad is okay. Point number one, hippo time is okay. Point number two, it's temporary. It is part of the journey. I genuinely believe that. Be careful it does not become your destination. I mean, too many people have got stuck in the mud. Life is too short to spend too long in hippo time. It's okay, but it's temporary. I've just shared a little bit of sumo with you. Let me tell you this. I think this stuff can help you. But here's what I've realized. It does not make you immune from problems and setbacks still. And there will be times in life when, metaphorically speaking, you may fall. The issue is not whether you fall. The issue is how long do you stay down there for? How long? Folks, in all that you are doing, 
Can I just say this? I wish you, seriously, a shed load of success. Not just professionally, but personally as well. And please, please, never ever forget this. You're utterly, totally and completely mad.